everybody, Steph. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick preview of some of the things I'm working on for the Ruby course. I'm taking a bit of a non-conventional approach. So what I want to explain to you in this particular video is the hierarchy of programming languages. You see, there's many different ways you can categorize or look at languages. And it's actually important to understand at least a little bit you know, why are there so many different programming languages, right? There's Ruby, Java, PHP, C, Assembler, Objective-C, C-Sharp. There's so many. So why? There's several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is because the hierarchy of languages. So let me jump into that now. So when I talk about the hierarchy of languages, I'm referring to how languages are stacked up on top of each other in relation to the CPU. So what the heck does that mean? Well, let's go to the next slide. So here we go. So at the end of the day, all programming languages are just written languages that send instructions to the computer. Now the heart or the brain of the computer rather is the CPU, the central processor, you know, 1.2 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz, that thing. That's what processes all the instructions uh, from our, ultimately, from the code that we write and other programmers write. Now, the thing is, is that the CPU itself does not speak in a very human-friendly language. It, it's actually very unfriendly. It's um, actually, and if you want to write in machine code, which is the language, the native language, if you will, of the CPU, uh, the natural language of the CPU, I'll, I'll give you a shot. This is what uh, native code looks like. This is uh, machine code. You see, it's, uh, I have no idea what this code is doing. This is just a small, tiny little snippet. It, as far as I know, it could be just saying, you know, write the letter I to the screen. Probably not even that. Anyways, you can look at it yourself and it's extremely not friendly, right? But this is what CPUs understand, right? This is what they understand. So it's not practical for humans to be writing this kind of stuff here. So what has happened over the years is that nerds have created languages that sit on top of machine code that will then translate the machine code. And these languages are, you know, as you go up the stack here from, from top to bottom, excuse me, from bottom, from bottom CPU upwards, the languages become much more human friendly or human readable. So machine code, which is this gobbledygook, goop. And then you have assembler, which is, you know, I don't have an example of that, but it's, it's easier to write and read than machine code. And even easier, easier than assembler are these high level languages. They're called high because they're high up the stack, right? This is the bottom here, the CPU, high up, high up the stack. Now, you know, when people say, you know, high level language versus low level language, what they're talking about. The lower the level of the lang language, the closer it is to CPU. 99.9999% of apps are written with these high level languages, C, C++, Ruby, Python, Java, PHP. And I would argue, well, I don't have to argue, C, C++, I think uh, they're lower actually than Ruby, Python, Java, because actually uh, Ruby is partly created with C. Python is partly created with C. Java is partly created with C and C++. And PHP created with C. So, you know, in fact, if I was to redraw this, this diagram I created, I would put C and C++ underneath Ruby, Python, Java, PHP, although technically they're all considered higher level languages for various nerd reasons. So there you go. That's the difference between a high level language and a low level language. The higher the level, the more human readable it is. For instance, like I said, here's some uh, machine code. Yeesh. And uh, let's go back. Here's some Ruby code. Puts hello world, or it could be print hello world. Now that's a lot easier for humans to read and understand. 